Good morning, everybody. This is Richard back at you. We got Miss Annie hanging out guarding the shop. We got Miss Teresa on the camera that made a mistake earlier that I'll talk about. <laughs> but hey, we got Randy's uh, 03 dodging the house, no second gear. Uh, he pulled the pan on it, tried to uh, see what's going on. The band struts were laying in the pan. He put them back on, tried to adjust the adjustment nut, and the nut would just barely catch the end of the thread and uh, still have like a half an inch or so between the lever and the servo uh, to apply the band so it still don't have no second gear. So uh, it doesn't have the original tranny in it. They actually shipped their tranny in as a core, and uh, so they shipped them another tranny back, and we put it in. Now this tranny here is... Uh, 10 of 02, yes. which makes it an 03. Yes. Okay, that's a mid year for the Dodge. Uh, what they did is, right there in 03, they went to throttle by wire. They got rid of the gas pedal uh, cable and all that stuff, the, the TV cable coming down to the tranny. They put a motor on the side of it so when uh, you give it gas, the motor would turn. So this is the, the 47, supposedly. It's got the TV lever and all that type of stuff, but when somebody else builds them, you physically don't know what's on the inside. So we physically couldn't order an overhaul kit for it. We had to order it. Uh, actually, I ordered two, uh, an early and a late. That way I could go ahead and get this uh, in Friday and, and get driving it. But uh, Miss Teresa messed up on the camera. So we had to start a whole nother <laughs> video. That's why you see the tranny apart a little bit. She forgot to put the little hootus in the phone right there. Uh, that sorry. would pick up our speakers and stuff like that. So we forgive Teresa. Always, she's the best, right, Teresa? <laughs> yeah, I know you have <laughs> to say that right now, but it's all right. But anyway, I'm going to start at the converter first. Uh, it does have a triple disc converter in it. There are some good parts in this unit. Uh, really nice looking converter. Nice backing. The hub looks pretty good. Probably scotch it up a little bit. I'm going to have to inspect it a little bit better because I don't like to make consumptions without cleaning it up and just looking at it really good first. But every, if you ever have a triple disc converter and you want to verify it and it has a drain plug in it like this, if it has a triple disc, the clutches will be stacked all the way up to the drain plug. If it has a single clutch in it, you won't be able to see the clutches. The clutch will be down here towards the bottom and there'll just be a gap right here. So you pull the plug out. If you see clutches all the way to the top, you know you got a triple disc. If you don't, then you just have a single billet. So pretty easy to identify that there. Not all of them have a plug though. And this way we can try to save him some money mm -hmm. and stuff yeah. by reusing it. Now also, I want to show you something on these converters you always want to check too. This converter here is built for this tranny, a 47 and down. Uh, the hub right here, if you look down in here, it's got a spot right here, right there where it gets bigger. Small, and then it drops, the outer part of it gets bigger right there. There's a lip, okay? Yeah. If you had a ceiling ring on this stator right here, you have to have a hub that is big or small all the way to the bottom. There cannot be no differences. It has to stay the same all the way to the bottom to accept the ring. If you put this converter in there with a ring, then the ring's going to fall off and go inside the converter. There's not enough metal in here to keep it sealed on the stator, I guess you could say. Okay? Just remember, if you have a ring, it's got to be smooth all the way to the bottom. If you don't have a ring, uh, it'll have a gap right here, a little deal. But one solid all the way to the bottom will retrofit back into this unit. We do it all the time, but you cannot go the other way. Pretty simple. So oh. you did find some stuff though when, with that spring. Yes. Because I made a mistake and... We're going to go back to the TV part of it first. When I took this uh, tranny out, I noticed this is your TV return spring right here. Okay, it hooks into here and it hooks into this hole towards the front that keeps your TV lever pulled forward. That way when you come to a stop, it doesn't have harsh downshifts or funny downshifts or anything like that. Well, he had it like this. He had it hooked to the uh, TV linkage and had it pulled back like this. And you can see how much he has it pulled back. See, and you can't do that. It'll cause harsh downshifts, uh, all kinds of crazy stuff. The trannies just do not like that. So this does go forward hook into that hole, hook the linkage on it like that, and, and pulls back like that. That's a big difference, huh? A big difference. So that's a must on that. So tranny should work totally different uh, when it gets it back, just from this little bit of adjustment here, so. I see a little fluid in these plugs. Yes, the connector is just totally full. 
a fluid here. If you look here in the neutral safety switch, even the neutral safety switch, yep. it's got fluid in it too. Now this here is what uh, makes it start in park, makes it start in neutral, controls all the lights in the dash for your park, reverse neutral and stuff like that. These connectors do have an O-ring down in here, if you notice. There's not one down in there, and there's not one down in here. There's not one in there. So, is it missing? It's gone. So, there's one that comes in the kit, and it, what it does, it just helps seal the cooler line connector to the cooler line and stuff. It's not just so much the flare. Yeah. So, you want to do that. This nut right here looks like it's... Well, this is your intermediate band adjustment nut. This inner stud right here should be sticking out about right here, and then the jam nut should be tight. That's how much band adjustment is not there. The nut is just barely hung on to the... Wow, that's crazy, huh? Mm-hmm. Now, he did try to adjust it, and that's where it... Now, look at that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's not even... Compared yeah. to how long this is. Oh, wow. Okay. So this nut ought to be, time this thing is adjusted right, that nut will be about like that. And it's sitting in there like that. Sure. Give you some adjustment there. <laughs> <coughs> our output speed sensor that goes on our overdrive valve right here. Let me talk about it. You can clean the metal off here, off the tip of it. You always want to make sure that the tip hasn't turned pink uh, from fluid getting on the inside of it, the tip of it. Sometimes these will crack, fill the sensor up with the fluid. We don't see uh, replacing a lot of these. Don't see a lot of codes with them very often. Mainly, uh, you'll see fluid inside the tip of it right there. It'll turn it pink on the inside. I have seen that before. Yep, though. yep. In a lot of my other videos, I show it and they are pink. Uh -huh. neat. Of course, we took our retainer off the top here. Got two tapered Torx bit screws, gasket goes there. We and I apologize, I'm sorry. And then here we already got this apart, so we'll take and put this kind of like this. Do it like that. So this will set down inside in the overdrive housing like that. You'll have a flat snap ring that goes in first. Right here, you have this big opening right here. You never want to put the opening of the snap ring there. Always take and put it in about right there. You can see where I put that opening at, mm -hmm. right there. Now you have the bevel or the wavy snap ring. I'll take and move it a little bit. Don't have to move it very far. And then we'll take and put that over there like that. Okay? Never want to put the openings in that big gap right there. And then one other main thing, this backing plate right here always has to go first. If you put this in backwards like that, put the steel down in there first, there's not enough thickness to this steel to maintain buoyancy, I guess you could say. If it'll just bend this and shove it down in there. So you have to put the thick one first, stack it all the way up to the last steel and then put this little wire in there to hold all the clutches and stuff in so when you turn it over and you stab it back on here, nothing falls out. That's the only reason why that snap ring's there. But you still want to put the opening over here. Not, you don't want to put it in the, you don't want to put it in there like that. And when he took it apart, they were actually in that big they opening. They were in the opening, yes. Instead of it being, in, and I apologize because I, Messed up on the camera. The video, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you it's got a wavy, early. and you got a solid. I say we're newbies again, almost. Yeah, no Been doubt. Been gone so long. So you got your flat, and then your wavy. Now, if you buy an over the kit that comes to put an extra clutch in fourth gear right here, you will do away with the wavy and use the flat only, and then. The backing plate is machined to set down in there so you can add another clutch. Okay. So if you ever run across that, I'm going to take Have our. I ever ran across that? I said if you ever run across that. Of course, we have a big snap ring right here that we have to open up, pull the overdrive section out. 
but also you want to pull this snap ring out and you want to look at it really close. Get out of there. There you go. This snap ring will go either direction, but it wears really bad. So you got to really watch this snap ring too. See how it starts wearing? Oh yeah, you can flip see it over. That. It wears usually wears the other direction. So it looks really good. This is probably one of the better snap rings I've seen. You can see that little bit of wear starting to happen right there. Mm -hmm. Now we do have a case saver for this housing here too. Uh, a lot of times uh, that snap ring starts getting wore in this housing right here. You can see it starting to happen just a little bit right there. See that wear? Yeah. Just a little bit. But what we do is we come in here and put this uh, case saver in there with this snap ring. Uh, or this bearing right here goes against the case the snap ring sets in there like that that way uh, even though it, the snap ring wore backwards like that into the case the bearing is going to never let the snap ring touch the back of the case again because of this spacer we put in there okay yeah so these are a must on everyone we do everyone we do have your seal right here keeps fluid from going out of your overdrive housing into your transfer case if you do get a leak here it's designed to run out this little weep hole right here onto the ground same way the transfer case transfer case front seal goes bad it's designed to leak out here there's never supposed to be any fluid in between the two transfer case and the overdrive housing then you have your park linkage this park linkage is real critical especially from a diesel to a gas uh, they changed the, the pin size through here. They changed this lever up. They changed everything up in here from a gas to a diesel. A diesel has to hold so much weight in park. If you put a gas parking assembly in a diesel and you put it on an incline, you cannot pull the shifter out of park. It's got to have a different type of angle on here so it will physically come out of park with that big of a load on it with a big old trailer with 16 cars on it or something. You know what I mean? Where a car... It doesn't have to have that type of uh, parking pole to hold that type of load. So you got to remember that you cannot put a gas tail housing pin assembly, parking assembly in a diesel because you will not get it out of park on a load. And I mean, almost just the weight of the truck itself uh, won't let it come out of park with a gasoline. Uh, parking pole and stuff in there because the truck's so heavy. You know, those diesels weigh 10,000, 12,000 pounds or something crazy like that. So We're going to go over here real quick. I need to look and see uh, what shape this uh, overdrive sun gear in, is in and the direct clutch. Uh, this bearing right here, we replace all of those. Uh, if this bearing starts going bad when it goes into overdrive, you'll hear a noise. You'll, you'll hear it instantly. You'll hear a, just a little bit of a roaring noise if this bearing goes bad. So we replace all of them. There's a new one right here. Uh, that way we just don't have that issue. Anytime this tranny goes into fourth gear, that's when the load is applied to this bearing. So anytime you're going down the highway for a thousand mile trip or two or three thousand mile trip, that bearing has a six or seven hundred pound load on that bearing from that spring that's inside this drum right here. Also right here, this snap ring right here is uh, holding your direct clutch in and also it's holding back a, you know, that six, 700 pound spring in there. This snap ring right here is bad about breaking. A lot of times we'll see a piece in the pan or we'll take this apart and look at it and this snap ring will be broken four different places. So this uh, backing plate right here has a chamfer on it right here to keep it from kicking the snap ring out though once it's uh, the spring is uh, put onto the, or the load is put onto the vacuum plate right here, excuse me. So we're going to walk over here. It's going to be a little darker. And we're going to take this. Do you want me to bring this? Yeah, let me have that. I'll just put it on here real quick. Is this more than two pounds? I bet it is. I bet it is. So we're going to take this apart real quick. Over here, I can take them both apart at the same time. But I'll put them back together separately. 
This has always worked really good for me. Teresa's dad actually gave us this. How long ago, Teresa, did he give this? 25 years ago? 27, 8 years ago? 40? Uh, no, not 40. I'm sorry. He's Probably, had it a long time. Yeah. When they started cleaning stuff out of there. Mm -hmm. like, this is the way I can take both pieces apart. Uh, the spring. The clutch part of it. We're going to go for the wire snap ring first right here. We're going to take that out. Come on, get out of there. There we go. It's like a stainless wire ring. And then, of course, we have our snap ring right here. Like that. Wavy. So now the main thing is when you relax this, you got to be really careful because this piece right here can jam up. And uh, when you take it apart, it's still loaded without this stainless wire in there. So I'm going to take this apart really slow and see if this jumps. Okay, see it come right off of it. You've seen it lean just for a second, just kind of a little bit of a bobble. But sometimes it'll get hung right there, and you better stop when it's hung like that because if you take it loose, it can jump out in your hand, and that's going to be releasing like six or 700 pounds of pressure all at one time, so it could hurt you really bad. Well, you did a good job there, Richard. Yes, ma'am. It come apart really easy. It a lot did. of times I have to tap on it with a hammer, put it back together, Pray over it a little bit and then try it again. Are you bored? <laughs> like I say, you always want to replace this snap ring here too. It's a wavy snap ring. You always want to put the tip again under the land. You never want to put the tips in the openings. Okay? You also, you want to check it right through here. This drum's bad about wearing right here where the snap ring sets at in here. So if the drum's wore, you gotta replace it with a new snap ring. Okay. This is our direct clutch here. You can see here. This is an early clutch design. This almost looks like a car. One, two, one, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now there's nine of them in there. So they do make different backing plates right here too to uh, give you uh, the choice of putting six clutches in here, seven clutches in here, or whatever. They, they, they give you different thicknesses here. The diesel, you want the most clutches in there you, you can get. Mm -hmm. Now also, some of these trannies, the later versions come out with a Z-Pack in here from the factory. And uh, the overhaul kits want you to retro it back to a normal clutch and steel clutch on both sides where Z-Pack, you remember, is single-sided. So if you get a factory one in like that, the, the overhaul kit's gonna come different, so. Okay, this still got, there we go. Well, there's that spring I was telling you about. That is one heavy-duty valve spring right there, I'd say, guys. That, I think I'd work on my race car, Teresa. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> Pretty crazy. Well, you want to look in here too for wear. These splines here, for any type of wear in here. This never wears here. This thing's so hard, I never see any wear there. But you do want to look at another area here. This bearing right here, or backing plate I call it, I call it a bearing backing plate kit when I buy them. This is what keeps the spring level. This is bad about wearing to one side. And then the next thing you know, your spring's setting in there crooked. It's trying to run crooked up and down on this when it's moving. So you always want to replace it too. And this is probably one of the most things that I see coming into a shop that never gets replaced. You look here, it's nice and shiny. You get over here and you're starting to see wear. And let me tell you, a lot of times it's way worse than this. Way worse than that. If you get the, well this one's still packaged up. I mean it's supposed to be nice and shiny and smooth all the way around. So, 
We always replace that. That's your spring. Your, ba your backing plate will come with a new bearing too. So you can replace that. The overdrive sun gear. Ooh, look at that thing. Ooh, the bushing fell out. Normally the sun gear right here would have a really wide bushing in it instead of a narrow. The, the aftermarket uh, puts a narrow. Uh, Dodge themselves, they got a bushing in there an inch wide. But the aftermarket, they dropped a really tiny one in there. You can see a bushing here. This actually rides on this like that. You got your this small bushing here. But you figure, why would they put a small bushing here when all your load is on the gear? It's not so much up here. You want to look at your splines, not your splines, but your teeth on your gear. Look for any pitting. This is a, another piece that we have coming in. Now they do make two, three different designs of this teeth, the, the angle of this gear right here. Uh, Chrysler had a problem with the wine and overdrive uh, because they had the gear stood up too far. Uh, so they laid, started laying it over and then they laid it over too far where it was taking out the planetary. So they, were, they were taking out the planetary because they laid this over so far that it's making the preload of this gear uh, tremendous, so tremendous against this thrust washer right here, it just pushed the thrust washers out. So they started standing the gear back up and taking the, load, the, the preload away on that gear. That way uh, it doesn't shove it up and down as hard. So this is the later version. It looks like it's standing up pretty tall. They do make a straight cut too. Uh, some of the early Dodges had a little bit of wine and overdrive is because they physically had a straight cut gear in it itself. You've heard of school bus wine in first gear, shifts to second gear, whining. Uh, that's what a straight cut gear will do to you. A school buses, they all have straight cut gears in them. So now, when you went to order that part, isn't that the one that um, Raymond said that he couldn't get? Yes, drive? Raymond said these right now, right now are on national back order. Now so we did find that's a one. Heads up, you know, to yeah. let people know. You know, a lot of this stuff nowadays. I mean, you just can't get none of it. You're scared to take in a job anymore. Well, but what I'm saying is, you know, I mean, things were bad before we ever, you know. Before my surgery, it was terrible. Which right. I've only been down ten weeks. Right. You know, two and, and a half and those months. Those were so. available back then. Back then, but and, now, and now they're not. They laugh so at you when it's you like, ask for a part. what else are we going to run into that we're going to have issues with? Mm -hmm. You know. I would say it's hard to take in jobs when you can't find parts right. but we do have a lot of connections we can call a lot of people and get stuff of course. which is that bearing this bearing doesn't have so much of a load up and down it's all being pushed back because of that 500 pound spring is pushing it backwards so you could spin this bearing and be quiet but if you take and push on it you could get some noise out of it because like I said it wears towards the back of the race not so much uh, in the center so, then we have our lower roller clutch it's dual style do not put this in backwards guys because it'll go in backwards i've done it before back in the day so you got to be really careful don't put it in backwards mm -hmm. it'll go either direction look at that it'll go right down in there so you just want to remember these little stops right here this stop right here so it's in there like that and also you can remember too the spring always pushes the roller uphill. If you look at this heel right here, how it's going uphill, the spring's pushing the roller uphill. Always remember that. That makes it a lot easier. There you go. So, bearing. Set it down in there. Boom, you're done. Never see any wear here. We do have a bushing down in here. Two bushings. We always like to scotch bright this race right here. All of this will still come apart. You can pull these little wires out of here like that you can take this one pull it out of there like that take that out you have two grooves one groove so you can't get it backwards but you can visibly visibly look at this area through here better to see if there's any wear for that bevel or that wavy snap ring to go in 
trying to get my brain to work right too. So you can take this apart here, pull this shaft out the back, then you can get in here and scotch bite this up a lot better. Your parking stuff here, want to make sure it all looks good. There's just a lot of stuff just in the overdrive part of it, huh, Trisha? No doubt. It's like now we're going to get another unit. Whole another unit. Of course, we have our overdrive apply piston right here. We have a bearing here. We have our spacer here. This spacer is selective. They make 10 different thicknesses. So uh, when you go setting things up, uh, you got to start checking everything. And especially when you put this in here, when you put this in the back of this housing right here, you're going to shove every bit of this tranny forward. And I mean by a ton. So once you put it in there and you go to check it, everything's going to have to be changed 90% of the time when you put this in there. So you just got to remember that too. And you got some seals here. A lot of people say, how do you know how to put a seal on? It can go either direction. You're right, it can. But if you look here, anytime you got a piston, you got a low side. Tall, low. So that way, the, the lip on the seal is going to physically, when it's inside the drum, it's going to fold over to the low side. So you got a high, a low. Stick that in there. Now when the piston goes in, it folds over onto the low side. Things like that. Mm -hmm. Same way here with this one here. See how it's tall, bigger. That way this seal can fold over into that area. See? So now your forward clutch drum too, you gotta be careful. These seals here look almost alike. So you gotta watch that. I didn't get a 3 8 hang on, Teresa. You forget some tools? I guess that's a yes. Alright. <laughs> you forgot tools. Yeah, socket. Now we have our case support right back here. We have these gold bolts. I guess this is like a hardened bolt or something that Price would put in here. This is the only colored bolt to the whole unit. <coughs> this little neutral safety switch right here has these two little tiny screws. Sometimes this is a bear to get out. Sometimes it'll come right out. Sometimes you got to fry for days. But when you move the lever, this moves in and out to give you your gear selection. Pretty simple. Like I say, you got seals that go in your connectors. Don't forget those. Well, somebody forgot those. Yeah. Now he does have a shallow pan on this. I don't think he's much of a fan of a deep pan, but I'm going to try to hook him up with a deep pan if I can because we know ourselves how important a deep pan is on a Dodge, especially when you have a tranny that sucks from the bottom. These trannies run dirty lots of times. They put a lot of trash in the pan, so all it's going to do is keep picking that stuff up from the bottom of the pan. Well, when you get a deep one, you can look over here. The filter is like two inches off the bottom of the pan, three inches off the bottom of the pan. You got uh, places in here where the trash will get collected. It's got a magnet already in the bottom of the pan you don't have to worry about. You got your uh, filter adapter right there to your extension. So we really like a deep pan on a Chrysler. That way we can get uh, rid of that cheap filter that only sucks from one side and we can put a performance filter in there that physically has way more surface area. So, I like that a lot better. You see there, it only sucks from one side. 
and it doesn't put fluid in here this is the, uh, the clean fluid in the top so you've only got one side of a filter filtering anyway with this filter so it's that's why you want to go to a deep too Huh. How did that fall out of there? Uh, I don't know where the clip is. So normally there'd be a clip. Yeah, that's holding that in there. Unless it broke or something and he found it in the pan. I don't know. And we have more of them, but. Hmm. But you can see here. That's interesting. These are the band struts. One goes there. Oh, this band broke totally. Oh. That's broken in half. That could be a problem. Yeah. I think that could be why he can't adjust it. <laughs> <laughs> could be. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. You got to make sure, too, when you do this type of strut, I always like to turn it over. If I'm mistaken. Make sure it's not going to hit the band. Because a lot of times these tall ones, they make these tall ones when you put it in, the valve body will set on it. So you got to just be really careful when you put it in there. Stock accumulator spring, stock accumulator piston. There's our band. <laughs> Should have come out the front. Crazy. But actually, this is a, a factory band you can see here. Uh, they don't have a whole lot of material on them. That's why I don't like using them. Uh, we will be using, pick this band up. We're going to clean it anyway. You can see here the band that we'll be putting back in here. A lot more uh, surface area of the band to apply on the drum. This thing probably has a lot of pressure. It's got an aftermarket servo on here to apply the band harder. It's got an aftermarket lever to even clamp on the band harder. So that could be why we have a broken band. Now if you notice too, the levers are, or these anchors here are offset. So the band goes in a certain direction. It goes in just like that. So. They used to make a, and I don't know if you can get them anymore, when a band broke like this, they made a slit band that you could slip around there and had a special end on it. You could clip it on there and save it without pulling the tranny out. But I wouldn't recommend it on anything that makes this kind of power. For sure. Then why do they have a stock band in there? I don't know. I'm trying to look see if that output intermediate shaft is billet. So we get the pump out of it real quick. See what type of pump they put in it. See, that's why another reason why I hate doing stuff that people do because you know we got a gasoline pump in here that's a gasoline pump and how can you tell that's a gasoline? Uh, just small uh, lugs here the way that the teeth count on the gear a lot smaller teeth you come over here 
yeah. See how big here? Oh, yeah. You're going to have a lot higher pressure with this pump gear than you are uh, anytime you put a shift kit in them or anything like that. Uh, it's going to put a lot more load on this, these teeth here to try to break them off. Okay. Yeah. So we've had them come in, broke off because they cranked the pressure up so high in here, uh, this tranny, that uh, it'll just snap them right off. So you got to be really careful. So to fix it right, you know, we physically have to find another pump to put in here to get the right type of pressure this thing needs. You know, 2006, hard to believe it lasts that long, especially uh, with the destruction that he said he was putting it through. At least the drum looks good with the band just broke. Uh, it didn't grind it up or go into the rivets or anything like that. Looks like we might have some steels messed up here a little bit. Did you see how that was spring loading? Yeah. See, that's because uh, one of the steels ain't flat no more. It's like a cushion. Oh, yeah. Did you see that? Yeah. See? <laughs> that's crazy. Oh, yeah. See? Uh, wow. Yeah. So your third gear burn up, too. And I only got four clutches in third gear. One, two, three, four. We've got to upgrade that to five. It's got a high groove drum where the groove is pretty far up in here. All we got to do is change the backing plate right here. Uh, and what I do is I use a forward backing plate uh, to put in here and get an extra clutch in here. Kind of a job to do, but if you know how to do it, you can do it real easy. Now, if you notice here, it looks like we got a billet a third gear hub here connected to a, the input shaft that looks built here. This different looking metal. Let's see if I got one close I can grab. Uh, where'd they all go? This is a stock one here. You can see this looks hardened. Shaft looks a little beefier through here instead of here. See how, how much bigger it looks? Oh, yeah. So, big difference. Mm -hmm. See what the forward clutch looks like. This does have an early model clutch in it. Uh, the teeth on the clutches are really big compared to a, a, a fine clutch. I'll get a clutch and show you real quick. What an eight. Or a late model looks like. When they went to the 48RE transmission, they changed uh, the teeth on the clutch. They changed the ring gear here. You can see the teeth on that clutch and the teeth on that clutch. How many more teeth they got on there? So I'll keep it from stripping out. Mm -hmm. See, you can upgrade it to the later version. All you got to do is change this ring gear right here to the forward planet. Have a wavy snap ring, or not wavy, but, oh, excuse me, wavy. I like to say bevel. We have our bevel here. We have a plastic spacer, and then we have our wavy snap ring. Same way, don't put the tips in the openings. See here. Yeah, this feels a lot heavier, heavier than that other one. Hardened. Mm -hmm. Looks really nice. Mm -hmm. Forward clutch piston. This is the seal here that I talk about. You can get mixed up with your third gear or your overdrive seal. Excuse me. They look kind of similar. This has a, a tall lip, this has a short lip. You just want to kind of remember that. You don't want to get those mixed up. Um, a little washer stand on there. Yeah. This washer here is selective. They make four or five different thicknesses here on this washer here. They make four or five different thicknesses on this washer here. They make a bunch of thicknesses on this washer here. That's what I was saying. On this tranny here, there's so many places to 
to move this tranny around. And what one of the biggest problems you get is when you put that spacer under here to move everything forward, you will actually move sometimes this drum right here. You can see here, this locks into this shell right here. Like that, see how far that's in there? But once you get it set up, the shell's out there like that. See? So you want to be able to move that shell in and out, get it in about in the middle. You never want it there. You never want it out towards the edge. So you has, that drum was kind of heavy. I bet it is. Okay. I like the, this is supposed to be a billet shaft too. Some of these are really hard to tell until you start looking at some of the metal surfaces and then you can kind of identify the metal being different. Sometimes it's just hard to tell by looking at the shaft. This little uh, selective spacer right here too is selective for your overdrive settings. You can see it's war right there at the tip of it on the outer edge of it right there. See how it's starting to wear? Oh, yeah. This side's flat. So they make a yellow, they make a red, they make a blue, they make a solid color, just metal color, so they make different thicknesses there. That out or intermediate shaft does look billet. You get in and look at this washer here. You can see we have some scratches on this. We can clean that up. up. On this side, but this side here is brand new. It's never been used, so you can just turn it over. This splines with the shaft and this, so it never turns. They turn together, so you're not going to get any issues there. Planetary, it's, it's in really bad shape. You can see here we got all the metal embedded into this. Now, normally, uh, on the 48RE with a steel planet, we'd have a thrust washer that runs here. And then the thrust washer would run right onto the, the ring gear and the hub there, like that. Well, in the earlier designs, the, the planet itself is the washer, this washer, and then the planet just runs on this. So once you get wear here on the edges, it tells you how much it's wearing down. You got metal embedded into it here. You can see here how much weight he's been, how much force he's been putting on this washer here. I mean, just trying to shove it through the planet. This shell sounds a little different, pretty hard. So this seems to be an aftermarket shell. It doesn't seem factory. The sun gear, I want to talk about those. Uh, on the 47 trannies, the sun gear was thin. On the 48 REs, they went to a lot thicker sun gear shell. And when they did that, they had to change this gear here. If you notice here, this is a narrow right here it's wide right here so the narrow sun gear is going to go with this shell if you use a get a 48 re shell you're going to use the wider one because the shell's thicker okay now we didn't know what we had on this tranny because it was shipped to them we don't we didn't know what was inside of it we didn't know nothing about it so that's why i had to kind of order a couple things and we'll just put them in stock always change your sun gears you can see here the pitting little pits all over the gears little tiny stuff but when it gets tiny it gets bigger quick okay uh, and you notice here four pinion planet we're going to go ahead and upgrade it to a six pinion planet so i'm going to clean this all up that way we can kind of spread the load out on the gears a little bit farther around the ring gear instead of just being in four spots helps out tremendously 
not much of a cost difference from a four pinion to a six pinion, so you, you, it's just a must. You need to upgrade that. Same way here. Got five pinions here. They make a six pinion. Five gear pinion is plenty strong enough for this truck. Don't really know why they went to a six, but uh, looks really good. Just check your gears for wobbling, anything like that. Feel if they're tight. Check your splines. None of these washers are selective. They're all the. Uh, if you have a five tab or five gear, you got five tabs. If you got a six gear, you got six tabs. If you got a four gear, you got four tabs. So they vary in that fashion, like that. get this reverse drum out of here real quick we see a lot of wear here usually too come on Like it's stuck in the groove there. Mm -hmm. If you get a thrust washer kit, uh, this will come in the thrust washer kit as brass instead of plastic. plastic. Plastic one still does work pretty good. When the band's starting to get burnt in places, you can see where it's starting to get dark. Mm -hmm. I definitely want to put another reverse band in there. It's crazy. I don't know why Chrysler did it, but the gear ratio in reverse on this on these trainings are really high geared compared to your first gear going forward. A lot of my buddies, uh, when they buy a low stall converter, they have to put them in four wheel drive to back up sometimes because uh, the weight's heavy and the gear ratio is so off. So we have our roller sprag assembly here. we have our rear case support this is just a factory style it's not updated you'll get wear in here where the, the intermediate shaft runs you get wear here where your reverse drum runs on here you start to get some pretty good scratches in here you want to look here for any chattering of the sprag the roller clutch right here if it gets any chattering or anything like that it'll put dents in here we always want to look at that. Let's see what they did to us here. A lot of times people will take the spring out and block these, put an over an aftermarket piston. That looks aftermarket. Looks doesn't look like a factory aluminum. And of course you get your intermediate one here. You can tell this is a billet style compared to a factory. The aluminum looks just totally different compared to uh, this type of aluminum, what Dodge uses. Got a couple springs in there it looks like. Curious to get the valve body part, see if I see anything crazy in there. I don't know if I want you to. I mean, we found a gasoline pump and a diesel. Yeah. Now, also, too, this has got a built in cushion right here. You see that little weep hole? It'll physically fill full of fluid, and when the band comes on, it pushes this pin down and it'll squirt fluid out that hole. I was going to say, don't you do that. <laughs> and then. Uh, a lot of shift kits, they want you to plug that or put a washer or something in there. And when you do that, you break the band. 
So Let's see if that's what they did. So it shouldn't do that then? I don't like doing it. It just gives the band too, makes the band too crisp of a downshift, too crisp of a forward shift. And they didn't do it. So that's good. Well, that's good. Yep. I love it. So. Race cars, like a drag car with a trans brake, stuff like that. Yeah, we would block that. Or not block it, but put a spacer in there and uh, make it solid. Sure. <clears throat> All the bores look really good. I think we're good there. Anytime you take this pin out right here, you never want to use your finger because this right here is a razor blade right there. If you take your finger and you take and stick your arm in there and try to push that pin out, that right there will slice it every time. So you want to remember that. So. And it'll only take you a couple of times. Only a couple you. of times. <laughs> you remember. Like I say, he has this wired to lock up in second gear. You know, so he's putting a big load on that band. That could have snapped it possibly. You know, it doesn't look like the band was really slipping on the drum because the drum ain't really just smoked like the clutches are. You know, these are smoked here, but there's only four. So we got to at least get five in there. Um, I didn't ever talk about how I do that, though. This is, anytime I go to put five clutches in this drum here, I would take this backing plate right here, and I would take a machine about a quarter of an inch or or so off the top of this right here. I don't take it all the way down because I need the support of that right there still making it this backing plate uh, stout, okay? But I need to get it off there because if not, it will rub on this drum. It will rub on this drum right there when you put it together, okay? So we add, once we do that, we can add another clutch and a steel. But you got to have another one of these, and then, but you just got to take that down a little bit. Once we do take this down, we put the drums together on the pump, flip it over, air check the third gear drum, and we make dang sure that it don't lift up on anything. It, when I air check it, it just nothing moves. Nothing moves. If it lifts up on something, that tells you that you haven't cut this down far enough yet. Okay. There's so much to know on these trannies to, to make it work. interested in the valve by to see what they've done to this thing. I always like to bend them back that way when I put it together I don't have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> your governor sensor here. You got your governor solenoid here. A lot of times the shift kits that we use will come with a plate that goes under here and kind of restricts the pressure going to the sensor a little bit. Keeps it from blowing the sensor up. Now this right here is your overdrive solenoid and your lockup solenoid. And also it has the uh, temp sensor in it for the transmission. The temp sensor is built into this bracket right here. A lot of times trash gets on these screens. So it's got fluid in it anyway, so you are just going to replace it and then we'll do that modification I talked about by sealing the end of it up. Now you notice here they have the uh, overdrive accumulator piston in upside down. Totally different design. Normally the piston goes in first with two ceiling rings and then the springs. This is in upside down. Like I said, this has a shift kit in it of some sort 
and then that's something you just got to watch uh, when you take the valve bite apart see what's going on All the bolts are the same length except two of them right here. All these right here are the same length. This one here is the same length as your filter bolt. And then this here is a shorter length for your uh, TV bracket and, and your pressure for regulator valve springs and stuff like that. Now some of them do come uh, with the same length bolt right there so don't be shocked if you do see that. Okay, see they had a washer down in here that just fell out. Goes against the springs. So you look for that. Looking for any type of holes or anything, see if they drilled to change lockup or a lot of times they put valves in backwards and stuff like that. So, but uh, if you see that little chamfer hole right there, see that little chamfer hole right there? Mm -hmm. There's another one way down in here. I don't know if you can see that because there's too much oil on it. But that's got needle sized holes in it. If a little piece of trash gets in there and plugs them holes, one of them, you won't have fourth gear, you won't have lockup. I mean, you, you won't have a lot of, you'll have all kinds of issues. Plates factory. We ha do have our little check ball here don't want to leave that out that's different than any other check ball so you want to kind of save it put it in a place that you won't lose it like right there <laughs> <laughs> and then the rest of the check balls through here and of course you have a larger one right here All the check balls in the troughs, one larger one there, and then you have one here by your TV valve, and you have another one over here for your third gear. Okay. Anytime you take this bracket off right here, this screw right here will be longer than this one. All the pressure on your PR valve and your TV valves and stuff is trying to push this bracket off like that. So the longer screw goes in there to hold the bracket in there. The shorter one goes on the bottom side of it right there. So you don't want to get them mixed up, okay? And they do have a, kind of weird how that's running so crooked on there. Oh, it's bent. Oh, hey, oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's huh. Running crooked on the valve even. That's kind of weird. Have to straighten that out. Get that back on the center of that valve. This is your switching valve right here. Your four land switching valve. Here is your uh, PR valve. Your pressure regulator spring. Your four land switching valve. So we'll be get upgrading this to a Sonex valve here too. You can see here. The TV valve is original. This valve here is original. We'll be upgrading it to a Sonex valve too. And then right here. You have a check ball for your detents. Your click, 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 and you fill it in the dash. We'll be putting another piece in here, what we call a bullet. Uh, this ball is bad about wearing out right here on the end and letting it lock where you can't get out of park. We want to repair that there. Look at the TV valve stuff.
all metal really nice stuff there they said they drilled some holes somewhere we're gonna have to find out kind of go through it and clean it up a lot better and look for some stuff that they could have done and change some things up here's your second gear feed here and your two third gear feeds here if you make it big here and don't make it big here you did nothing so you have to make it big here and big here to make third gear a little firmer and then a little bit bigger here for second we won't mess with second but we're going to try to beef third gear up just a little bit and add that extra clutch in there but if you notice here too i just seen something i say you just keep running across things try to find a towel if you look here we have a 48 re valve body plate it's got a hole in it right here that's how you identify a 48 re valve body plate and assembly so gonna have to look at some things and see what they really got going on here when we get this tranny back in we're gonna really have to monitor it and make sure it works the way it's physically supposed to work because I'm really seeing some things that could really kind of mess it up huh so it is what it is every time you get one take them apart that somebody else has done you just never know what you're going to find but we can definitely make it better here huh Teresa? yes sir and you know what it's hot in here it sure it is. is i'm very about hot done my arms are killing yes. me yes well you know we we love you to death we thank you for recording and taking the time to come out here and being with me and annie yeah i know <laughs> and the fans there you appreciate go. you guys definitely for hanging out and, and and coming back and watching us again because it's working good guys don't forget to subscribe, push your notification bell. I hate saying that, but we enjoy you guys a lot. Have a good day.